फेस मास्क डिटेक्शन नाउ लेट्स स्टार्ट बाय इंपोर्टिंग सम ऑफ द इंपोर्टेंट पैकेजेस स्टार्ट्स विद इंपोर्ट नंपाय एजेंटी इंपोर्ट मैट प्लॉट लेब प्लॉट पाइप प्लॉट एस पीएलटी इंपोर्ट सीबी टू from pil import uh, image and import os okay start working now we need to do the important thing and that is uh, let's read the images with the uh, mask and uh, images without mask let's name it as image image 0 uh, equals to image dot open my file is available here please remember wherever your file is there you need to look for that my file is available somewhere here e in open cv package i have my data sets under my uh, face underscore mask and here is my train images and under the train we are having two folders with and without so in this case my two things are very important to understand that my images are already splitted itself into train and test folder under the train folder we are having two sub uh, things which is uh, with mask and without mask with mask we have got all the images which have got uh, the which is wearing different different mask types and most of them are surgical masks so you can expect that this image will work better with a surgical mask uh, next uh, is that we are having without mask which is a normal face so this is the data which i took it from uh, various locations and i prepared here one common file which is around 74.2 mb so it's a very large data set in terms of images and this is the path from where i will read my first image you also unzip your folder and then get your files first so i'll first try to read with mask let me put here the with mask and uh, here i will take one of the image let's keep uh, let's take one image like nine with mask so most of our location will be same only you have to change this like uh, in my case it's e under open cv your will be something like c or d drive under whichever location you have taken now i'll take here two faces with mask and one face with without mask and i'll display them so that you can see how does the image will look like without mask image 0 pld dot figure figure dot add underscore one comma the comma one so basically i am uh, i have sub plotted into one cross three there is one row and three column let's add here some sub plotting to display multiple images mg plot equals to plt dot i am show and let's pick here my first image which is mask image zero a one dot set underscore title with mask let's keep my font size which will be equals to 10 a2 a2 a3 a3 let's change my locations here sorry images here this one is my mask one and this is my without mask image zero okay we're getting some warnings here okay uh here one three image number 2 1 3 image number 3 okay so we got here uh, faces of uh, mask with masks and without mask and if you do you can do control z at least it is undo uh, from here yeah go to the location where your uh, mask image is present and just paste here also remember that uh, there are two folders one is mask folder and one is without mask folder so without mask will have without underscore mask folder name and with mask is having with underscore mask name that is also you can make a mistake there so better to go into the specific locations where these images are stored and uh, then take the values okay great uh, so 
I'm expecting that uh, you have given the correct path. Uh, so remember the path thing. Okay. Uh, the first step towards uh, preparation of my convolution neural network uh, part will be to understand uh, a terminology called as image data augmentation. This is a very important step. In this image data augmentation, we have to read all uh, RGB images. Data will be used to create new samples for train for training the new sample will be transformed using image data generator here images will be resampled using pixel normalization which means that we will divide each pixel value by 255. Also, we will add transformations like these are the common uh, things you can apply to all your images to prepare new training samples. Image augmentation, if you will, let's begin from TensorFlow dot keras dot uh, preprocessing dot image and we need to import here load underscore image data from tensorflow dot keras dot preprocessing dot image we will import here image data generator and from numpy import expand dimensionality these are all my imported packages once we have to call my packages let's try to load image data in order to load the image into the keras we have to use the package of load image from uh, the image pre-processing part and uh, you can take any image like i'll go with uh, this particular image here this one uh, the second one okay this is how it will look like got here 10 with uh, mask jpg now let's convert this image to an array convert image to an array in order to do so we'll write here data equals to img to array it is image to array and we'll pass here img pick here my samples which will be equals to so first of all we loaded the data and we converted them into a numpy array and now to the numpy array we will expand the dimensionality okay let me tell you what is the meaning of expand dimensionality first see what is the data shape we are getting here the data shape uh, tells me the shape of the image which is 350 cross 233 cross 3. But in this case, one is one thing is missing. What is that? Number of images. That is also an important thing. So we'll have expand dimensionality and in that we will pass data. And you will do it. Okay, along x is 0, we have to write. Okay, so we got here. Now let's see what uh, basically this has uh, created. So we'll start with this. And then we pick here samples dot uh, shape, which uh, tells me four things. Number one, first is my number of images, and then shape of the image, which is given by 350 cross 233 cross 3. So basically, we have converted uh, the image dimensionality, and now to this data that is got generated, we are ready to use it on different different changes uh, that we wanted to apply to my images so first of all we will apply to it rotation of the image change the orientation data gen equals to image data generator and to my image data generator i will apply first rotation part rotation range which will take a degree like by what degree your images should be changed after defining my image data generated 
generator part. Okay, uh, everyone pa first finish it your ear and drop done in the chat. Let's apply the rotation of the image to this. So first we will generate something called a data generator in which we will apply only one transformation at a time. I'll name it as image data generator IDG. Using the data generator dot flow, I will provide here the samples data and we'll have the batch size, which will be equal to one. Take my figure and X here dot uh, subplots and provide here the shape one cross five cross figure size which is equals to 24 uh, 25 cross 15. let's say trade for i in range five that is we will be generating here five different images click here my figure equals to prd dot figure batch equals to image data generator dot Take here image one, which is equals to batch zero dot as a type uint it x i dot i am show image one and let's pick here pld dot show to finish everything which goes like this. So you can see that here, all these images are changing its orientation. If you will execute it again, you will see again change in the orientation. So it won't be fixed. The maximum degree is 20. So not all the images will be rotated by 20 degree. 20 degree is the maximum rotation. 20 degree is uh, maximum rotation of all my images okay uh, once we are done here now let's uh, move to the next part okay uh, in the next section we will add uh, zoom zoom image data zoom range uh, don't take it as uh, so many high value because uh, it has to be taken between zero to one one means hundred percent zoom and uh, three means thirty percent zoom now this will there will be two type of thing here in zoom range your images can be zoomed out or zoomed in. Zoom in or zoom out. Okay, now let's uh, go ahead with the next part here. Uh, this was about zoom. Next, uh, let's apply the next transformation. Now remember that I'm just uh, showing you that what happens in uh, different, different uh, transformation. Third one is horizontal flip, horizontal, Flip. You have a vertical flip as well. Obviously, as the name suggests, horizontal flip will be particularly flipping your images. And uh, in this case, again, uh, let me show you the horizontal flip. And uh, you have to just make it as uh, true. So if you will make it as true, you will see that this is your normal image. So first three are your normal image. But uh, the last two, if you will see, this center one is the flipped image. This is called as horizontal flip. Now look at here, first image is horizontal flip of the original image. This is how it works. Look at here, different, different uh, shear uh, range value that you will put. Now, shear range basically changes according in the diagonal. Okay, the change is in the diagonal here. Okay, you can see here that we have got the shear transformation and with the shear transformation, we have got all the different uh, type of uh, data. That is how your things will change. Now let's uh, go with my apply image data generator on my multiple images. In underscore data gen, image data generator. Let's apply here rescaling where we will try to divide each uh, value by 255. Provide here my rotation range, which will be now. I'm going to combine all this together instead of uh, having this was just to show you like each effect. Uh, how does they affect the original image? Uh, first of all, remember that all your images should be normalized. How to norm? How to perform normal pixel? Uh, how to perform the image uh, pixel normalization? 
divide everything by 255. Uh, this is known as your uh, image pixel normalization. Let's uh, do the next thing, which is my train image data generator. And let's divide 1 by 255 for image pixel scaling. Let's take my rotation range, which will be equals to, say, 20 degrees. Shear range, which will be equals to, again, 20 degree. Zoom range, which will be, again, equals to 20 degree. Uh, sorry, zoom will be 0.2, that is 20%. Shear range, in fact, I'll keep it as to just 10. Rotation 20 is enough. Then I'll fill, I'll put here the horizontal flip, which I'll make it as true. And uh, fill mode, which will be equals to nearest. Let's generate here my test image data generator. Test data gen is equals to image data generator let's do rescaling which is equals to 1 divided by 255 now in the training we are doing all sort of a transformation but on the testing data or on the validation uh, image data we are not doing any ma major changes we are just doing one thing and that is we are dividing each and every pixel by 255 the training set will contain the transformed images from the train data gen. Again, we need to take here the entire folder. Flow from directory. You have two options, flow from data frame, flow from directory. You will take it from directory. And we need to provide here the path of E, open CV, face mask, and uh, train. We go ahead with my target size, which will be equal to 150 cross 150. S size equals to 16. And uh, class mode equals to binary. Let's keep my test set. Test underscore data gen. Flow from directory. And let's replace your train by test. And uh, so. In this case, one thing we are doing, and that is we are reshaping all the images to a new shape of 150 cross 150. Reshaping all images to new shape of uh, 150 cross 150. In this case, we have taken here the batch size, which is 16. Batch size is 16, that means so total number of images that will be trained at a time will be only 16 images that is the meaning of batch size number of images trained at first iteration number of images uh, will be trained in each iteration will be 16 images then again 16 images then again 16 images and it will continue doing it until it reaches to the last so like 1314 images are there so this 1314 images will not go at one go will be not trained at a time but it will be trained in a batches of 16 images so your algorithm or number of samples are so we have got some few thousand images that's why we kept the batch sizes small with increase in this number of images the batch size will also increase in 22 uh, the train data generation generator the image data generator so we, will it do for all images after one go yeah like normalize and all the things. yes yes this will go at one go or this is only for the training part i'm saying what is the purpose of batch size will be basically related to the uh, training of the model this is not related to how the training set will be generated but this is related to how the images are getting trained in algorithm so right now there is no way we have written about how to build a model but when i'll write it you will understand that let's see what happened to my image data <coughs> i'll take here uh, image shape which will return me the new shape as 150 cross 150 cross 3 and uh, class indices which will return me with mask labeled as 0 and without mask labeled as 1 build a cnn model from tensorflow dot keras dot layers import tens layer convolution 2d max pooling 2d flatten these are the transformations that will be applied to my images from tensorflow dot keras 
dot models import uh, sequential from tensorflow dot keras dot optimizers import adam this is used to build a sequential which is obviously need a, known as feed forward neural network or can be called as your cnn model optimizers is given by to minimize to minimize error by optimizing parameters basically the parameters are nothing but the weights and the biases initially as you know that the weights and biases will be some random initial value and it has to change and uh, while training it will change to the finalized value just like the way we learned in the theory that uh, the layers are created and they are connected form a very large dense neural network you can see that the process of a and b and c has to be re repeated and what does the a b c includes the a b c includes here the steps of convolution plus relu plus pooling and this will be repeated multiple times then we'll have flatten then fully connected neural network and then the sigmoid or the softmax depending upon what type of classification you are performing like in this case without mask is class 1 and with mask is class 0 so we just finished our building the model uh, please drop yes in the chat if you have finished it just a general question i wanted to understand uh, when there is no class or uh, it is a large unsupervised data then uh, can we go for uh, CNN model. You can use CNN, but uh, it will be unsupervised as CNN, which is also known as your auto encoders. Auto encoders. Or units. In that case, your uh, problem statement will be totally different. Like auto encoders are good to reconstruct images, text from the compressed version or from the noisy data. It is used to generate uh, the original image to remove the noise. Auto encoders are used. So basically, to reconstruct it. UNET uh, is one of the popular algorithm which is used for uh, UNET architecture are used to reconstruct uh, and uh, again it's uh, for unsupervised method where it is used for uh, you will say segmentation for image segmentation so yeah that's all this, the will, be for, this will be for multi-dimensional or uh, 1D type of data if it's image that sure. will be um, unit and auto encoders everything is for images images not for 1d data you can uh, there will be no assets requirement in unit or now no in if it if it is a 1d data you can better use uh, for uh, your k nearest neighbors or things of uh, your sorry not k, k nearest neighbor uh, k or k means clustering or hierarchical clustering that would be a better approach why to go for this expensive method expensive methods will uh, be never but like in, in, uh, in collab this uh, uh, if the data is too much it doesn't show hierarchical clustering the figures and all no, those things it can take time if the size is too large then obviously collab nowadays is almost like a paid environment so huh, do not use funny. it use uh, see if your data size is large then obviously you need that is not uh, uh, the collab will be uh, basically giving you the results so yeah. you go for something else like go for your local machines and have a good uh, machine as well for that that will be always the case that is not the limitation of machine learning that is limitation of the resources okay are we ready till here this unit is for uh, images grayscale is not mandatory these are all for images doesn't matter if it is a colored image or grayscale image. medical images uh, are not always grayscale no? can we have the answer if you are ready for the next part if it is done till here we'll go for the next uh, section okay uh, so let's discuss the let's discuss here the next examples define build model start with model equals to sequential model dot add convolution 2d in the convolution 2d will have the filters number of filters which is of course will be a very high value we'll take it as around 64 kernel size which will be equals to 3 cross 3 adding equals to same activation function max pooling model dot add we'll start with my max pooling 2d is a default value now with the default value it will have uh, other details as well 
Now let's begin here with my hidden layer, my convolution neural network, Con convolution neural network number two. This was my first layer. Let's call it as convolution net layer number one. Now this has got filters. Filter is equals to number of filter. It should be around two to the power n. We we'll start by padding, which will be equals to zero padding. Kernel shape, which will be equals to a matrix of three cross three with a padding value of so keep when you write padding equals to same it means that it is zero padding when you write padding equals to valid then it is a uh, valid padding by default the max pooling uh, comes up with uh, your with your stride being two cross two and uh, the pool size is also two cross two so as explained in the theory everything is as it is now we need to repeat here the same thing two or three times that depends upon how large is your input shape now remember that one thing because this is my first uh, full-fledged algorithm so the input shape is my image shape which is obviously representing a 2d image we have to provide the shape uh, of the image which uh, is displayed here whatever the training shape is there the same will be your testing shape that has been uh, changed here to new target shape and that is exactly what you have to pass this is my convolution layer number three after repeating it three times we'll flatten here model dot add flatten create my fully connected neural network start with my fc layer model dot add hence units 128 activation function rectified linear unit model dot add units one activation function sigmoid learning rate will be kind of my alpha value which is given by 0 0.001 to one value and we have got the optimizers which is equals to adam adam underscore optimizer adam function learning rate 0 0.001 okay um adam is one of the best optimizer and uh, alpha is your learning rate learning rate will uh, vary depending upon how large your number of samples that has to be trained if you will make it as default value which is like 0 0.001 then learning rate is considerably fast if i'll make it as slow then it will be learned slow if it, if i'll make it as 0 0.001 then learning rate will be fast uh, do not exceed more than one because if you will exceed more than one then learning rate will be fast and the optimization will not happen properly okay so here are your for details that we have to mention now let's pick my loss value and loss here in this case is binary underscore cross entropy classification matrix which is equals to accuracy model dot compile pick my loss value which is binary underscore cross entropy optimizer is equals to adam underscore optimizer which is equals to accuracy this returns me model. There's some error here in model dot add. So units, I think somewhere units is required. So units isn't it? Activation equals to sigmoid. This is the activation is a relu. There is a error. Got unexpected units. It has to be dense is missing, I guess. Units will be equals to one, not units equals to two. This is binary class. If I'm using sigmoid it will be unit equals to one if i'll be using softmax then i could have gone for two now error is gone and uh, get my model summary just like the way we have discussed <coughs> okay uh, let's uh, take a short break and then uh, we will start with the next part of how to train this type of model just have a look on uh, all these uh, things meanwhile and uh, after the break i will take your questions all right uh, welcome back everyone let's uh, go ahead with our next part so is there any question in how to create a model these are all related to the theoretical discussion that we ha had yesterday and according to that uh, you need to build a model that we have built here let us save the best model now from tensorflow dot keras import callbacks now this is a very important thing these algorithms about the images uh, which we are trying to build will take a lot of time to get trained let's say one minute uh, uh, for each iteration so if it will be 30 so it will take around 30 minutes to get trained now with size of the images this uh, duration to get trained properly will be also increasing parallelly so it's a good idea to always save these models 
and then later let's say i wanted to run it in another application let's say an android application or something so in that i don't have to retrain my model but i can use that trained algorithm the trained model to get our results so let's go ahead with my file path which is equals to e open cv and i'll name it, uh, name the file as maskmodel.hdf5 hdf5 will be extension you can name this file as anything like i'll name it as mask_model.hdf5 and i'll create a checkpoint for this this will be the first checkpoint so model what models will do is it will basically try to look for the best performance of the model so model checkpoint will try to keep on tracking it it will take the file path where all my locations are stored and what we will monitor we will monitor here validation loss value along with that we will apply here save best only which will be true made true mode equals to the minimum value we will try to minimize here and verbose that is uh, we will try to start by the checkpoint and get my results now once we got it uh, let's uh, try to fit my model so model.fit underscore generator go with my generator equals to training set validation data which is equals to test set epochs equals to 30 that is 30 iterations shuffle equals to true that is we need to make it randomly shuffled callbacks checkpoint verbose that is display everything in detail as one okay now this is gonna return me history in this case we'll have uh, details like epochs which will be equals to number of iteration and we need to make sure that it is shuffled so every time the model is getting trained it will reshuffled as well ignore the warnings we have passed here the training data set validation data is just like testing but the difference between testing and validation is that validation happen parallelly like when your entire epoch will be finished you will get two things one validation accuracy and the training accuracy now the algorithm will try to look for which uh, model has the best performance where the validation loss is the minimum and according to that it will save the model in this given location so it will try to save the best performance of the model into the given location by creating the file automatically model has started training can we have some responses in the chat you can see that epoch is your total number of iterations and in every iteration in every epoch there will be 83 iterations which is taking place now these 83 iterations will depend upon the batch size if your batch size will be small your uh, per epoch iteration will be large if your batch size is large then per epoch size per epoch iteration will be small in every epoch 83 iterations are taking place right of course this is dependent upon uh, the number of batch size number of epochs so you can provide anything uh, again this is totally a uh, random value that you have to take we can't decide that what will be the suitable epoch without uh, trying into the algorithm will be dependent upon how large number of samples you are working in if your number of samples are good enough and you think that uh, your model will able to get trained in less number of epochs you can keep it as small so this will be the value of epoch will be inversely proportional to the size of the image sorry uh, total number of uh, image in this case we are dealing with how many images total number of images around uh, 1000 something right that is the total size of the image 100 1314 images are there if let's say instead of 1314 we could have got uh, only say 200 images so that 200 images will result into uh, having epoch value in that case we have to increase the epoch because your number of samples are uh, small so your epochs will be large Similarly, if your uh, images are number of images are uh, large, in that case your epochs will be small. TensorFlow hyphen GPU. This is how it works. As you will do it, uh, as uh, you will start uh, the installation, then uh, that particular version it will directly use your NVIDIA or whatever you are, uh, whatever the things you are having. 
and accordingly it will work so that's the easier step and uh, according to that your uh, gpu will work now what about uh, yeah one more thing please remember that your uh, settings and all everything has been done in your windows or whatever the operating system you are using that your machine should know because uh, you have to run something like uh, tensorflow dot debugging dot set log device as true and it should return you that gpu thing that uh, your devices are or list physical devices also you can do uh, like tf dot config dot list underscore physical devices that is also going to work to show that uh, you are having gpu machines and then you can start working for them. i'll start with a new example which will be similar to this and uh, what you will do in that case is uh, you will simply write here. now let's read uh, different type of expressions there are seven expressions images which are available to us if you will go through the facial expression these are all logs and all uh, okay let me remove the logs face uh, expression images okay under the face expression images you will find train data set which has got seven expressions angry disgust fear happy neutral sad and surprise these are my facial expressions now let's uh, read images of expression start with my face underscore image zero cv2 dot i am read e open cv face underscore expression angry and let's pick one of the image i'll go with 22 dot jpg again you can take the you can go inside the folder and uh, as i discussed in the previous part just go where your images are and take the look part. like under the angry we are having these are small images these are all different expressions of uh, angry we have go, i'll go with 120 so i'll go with my 120.jpg next uh, one two three four five six seven dot zero one two three four five different different expressions are there uh okay what are the different folders that are available to us so second image i'll take it as disgust and third image i'll take it as uh, fourth image i'll take it as uh, fifth image i'll take it as uh, neutral sixth image i'll take it as uh, sad after this, the next image that we take it as surprise. 299.jpg, 2.jpg, 7.jpg, 4.jpg, 3.jpg, 15.jpg. Start with my faces which equals to face image 0, face image 1, face image 2, face image 3, face image 4, face image 5, face image 6. Facial expression, angry, disgust. Fear, happy, neutral, sad, surprise. Okay, using a for loop, I will uh, display all my images now. Let me start saving them one by one. It is returning me this. What is this? This is mask image. Even if I'll replace it by this. Now, what is the output of uh, this uh, variable? I'm getting an image. So, image data image dot open just read it as an image whereas uh, cv2 dot uh, im read reads it as an array data you can use ultimately here we are particularly trying to read them so that we can display it and to do that one we are having multiple options right now i'm using cv2 dot im read if you are not liking cv2 dot im read replace it by image dot open that will also do the same. We'll start with my subplotting part after this. In the subplotting will have figure, fix size, with my 16 cross 9. For index, we we'll start with my enumerate faces, with my facial expression, all. And let's end up it with my PLD dot uh, subplot, 2 cross 4 cross index plus 1. PLD dot I am show, color map equals to gray. PLD dot title, start with my label, percentages percentage label out of my font size which is equal to 10 and let's end up with my plt dot show which basically returns me all the different type of facial expressions pick any of this image that we have read let's say face one face image one and let's try to get the shape coming out to be 48 cross 48 cross 3 this coming out to be 48 cross 48 cross 3 once we are done with this uh, let's apply the same image data augmentation part is it completed your images are ready now let's quickly go to this particular line again you can apply the same to these facial expressions as well 
I'll not repeat it. I'll simply go to this line where we did the scaling rotation. Shear range I will not put. Zoom range and horizontal flip is enough. Still more being nearest. Data gen from directory location has to be taken now again. Face expression till train data set. And the new reshaping of the image that we will be taking here will be 64 cross 64. Original image was 48 cross 48. So we are basically expanding the image. We are reshaping the image and we are making it a little larger. Batch size, uh, okay, let's try to understand that batch size will be directly proportional, sorry, batch size will be inversely proportional to the number of images. If number of images will be large, batch size will be, sorry, directly proportional in fact. Best, if number of images will be large, batch size will be also large. If your number of images are a small, batch size will be also small. Let me pick the path here. Take your entire folder location. This can never be a binary class classification in any of the cases. We have to convert this into class mode to categorical, which indicates that this will be a multi-class classification problem statement as there are uh, seven different classes in this. We don't have a test data set location. I think we have got validation here. So train and validation locations has been taken. Your newly generated target size will be 64 and your number of batch size uh, will be 32 this time because number of images are large. Now after executing it, we will able to know that how many number of train images are there, which is around 28,821 that belongs to seven classes and uh, something around 7,000 uh, plus images are there, which belongs to the validation data set or you can say the testing data set. So one example, if you have understood, uh, similarly, you can perform on multiple such examples. As you can observe that I have not made a large change here. This is my input image shape and we go with my class indices. And here are the label of those uh, classes. Angry is labeled as zero, disgust is one, and surprise is six. The other program is running, it is not finished. I am not getting the answer. What is the status here about the second program? Is it finished? I am not able to see done in the chat. If it is done, then we should run the second program as well. And uh, let's wait for the first program to get finished. How much it has reached? In my case, it has reached till epoch equals to 24. So six more to go, that means six more minutes. Okay, it has finished, uh, then uh, wait for it. Uh, in my case, once it will be done, then I'll uh, discuss about the next part. Hmm. Of course, it will be done because I restarted my program. If you remember, it got hanged in between. So that's the reason mine uh, will take six more or five more minutes. Okay, uh, let's build this second model, which is a multi-class classification for the images part. That will be following the same trend. Build a CNN model. Go with my build model function with my sequential function and filters being equals to. Here I'll uh, increase uh, them by large value. I'll keep it as 128. Why I'm going for large? Because my image uh, is a little bit confusing and all is small images are there. So we have to go for larger number of filters to expect that my model performance will be better. So I'll go with 64 and the second layer will be 128. Third layer will be 256. Going for a large number. And I'll add one more layer, fourth layer, which will be whenever we are training the model, there is a line written in that shuffle equals to true. What do you mean by shuffle equals to true that the samples will be reshuffled. Every time we are, uh, the training finishes or one epoch finishes, the shuffling will take place. Now, how do, we, how do I know that what will be the shuffle in your case and my case? That's the reason why everybody will get the same will not get the same accuracy. It depends upon the permutation and combination of how, in which order the samples are getting arranged and it is getting feeded into the algorithm. Categorical underscore cross entropy, atom optimizer, matrix optimizer, sigma will be changed to what will be this value? What will be this particular value here? In fully connected neural network, what should be the what should be the activation function and what should be the units? In this section, uh, we have discussed about the particular example of uh, the neurons and uh, the neural network. 
part which we i think discussed it uh, just yesterday itself so in that case of uh, my you know, to provide it then we have the atom with my learning rate being 0.001 this will change to categorical underscore cross entropy because we are working on multi-class classification in case of binary it will be binary underscore class binary underscore cross entropy and it was sigmoid and one so remember that uh, seven indicates here number of classes so units will be equals to number of classes import date time import tensor flow log directory which will be equals to os dot path dot join t open cv trace expression now i am generating here uh, some log files as well which will be named as the current date time year month date hours minutes seconds tensor board callback is equals to tensorflow dot keras dot callbacks dot tensor board and we start with my log dir this is used to save the best model this is used to save the logs that is to save the performances of the model and performances Basically, you will able to see how the losses decreased over the epoch and how the accuracy increased over the each epoch. If you will now read this, what is exactly happening here? That in every epoch, you are observing that that it is taking me, it is telling us that how much duration it has took. Like in this case, you can say that it has taken 89 seconds. And uh, we are having some loss value which uh, is represented as a 0 0.1243 along with that we are having some accuracy value which is coming out to be 95.05 with my validation loss coming out to be as 0 0.1079 and my validation accuracy is 95 percent now this will be monitored here that there is a now you see that uh, how we are saving the best model the best model will monitor the validation loss value so if it will improve from the past then only it will update to here the checkpoint will update in the saved model part like here that okay the model has improved otherwise it will just uh, give you the details that okay model has not improved like validation loss did not improve from the best which was 0 0.087 here you can say that it has again there is an improve uh, improvement the validation has uh, loss has decreased so it is coming out to be here the value so this will continue going on like this and it will check wherever there is a performance drop or there is a drop in the validation loss value like you can say that uh, the new validation loss is coming out to be 0 0.5949 which has happened here and in the epoch number six in your case it could have been in, at a different place so it can vary the last best performance has not improved from this so this becomes my saved model and this is my best performance of the model now you can also monitor validation loss or you can also monitor here validation accuracy as well if you will write validation accuracy then mode has to be max because we are going for validation loss so the mode has to be the minimum value and according to that your model is getting saved into this location now further this if i have to check the performances i need to read it like let's say next day i wanted to check i don't have to train my model i will simply read this file and i will check my performances which is what we will be doing okay uh, let's uh, finish this example so same will happen here as well uh, the only difference is that uh, make sure that you change the file name as you observe here now we go with my history training set validation set goes like my test set epox equals to 30 shuffle equals to true callbacks equals to a checkpoint and the logs logs i will be able to explain you better with the output because this is basically will tell you that how the model performed 
and we'll keep it as verbose equals to one and uh, now model will start also i like to add in this case uh, the history part history dot history which will give me the details of the losses validation losses accuracy and validation accuracy that is training accuracy testing accuracy performances we can monitor by printing so how to print it three dot uh, data frame i'm into my first example history dot history spd is not defined no problem Pan import pandas spd now using this i will simply make a plot for my whole epoch performances dot now in this i will compare let's say i'll compare here accuracy and validation accuracy let's see them and make a plot okay this looks pretty fine this is how the performances work. validation loss this is how my losses changes this is how my accuracy changes remember this will not able to execute next day okay because we will not run this line we will not import the package we will not uh, execute this line again as we have already uh, trained our model so we will not repeat the same so rest all we will discuss in our next session i'm planning to have a session on uh, dot finished we'll continue ha having the session so we will uh, drop you message if you want a break uh, then we can give it to you tomorrow and we can have a session from sunday to let's say one or two more sessions will be required so we can finish it within that then uh, meanwhile if you have uh, okay uh, please make sure that uh, this uh, finishes itself because this will take some time you can say that this will take some time this is not going to be uh, this is going to be a slow training process unless uh, you go for the gpu mode sir i got an error in color map i'm getting in so color map here in here uh, yes sir yes sir here in the location plotting. will be wrong path yeah. will be wrong path is correct path will be wrong what is the error are you reading in a zip file format okay sir i'll try and write back it is where is the coding go we have got training set test set but we have also written this no whole thing is uh, gone let me write it again but it is not uh, showing up here maybe somebody has deleted it and the model save the best model performance by monitoring the validation loss then we go with my other details okay uh, you can start uh, running it and once it is start running you can uh, confirm me that uh, it is done and also the add these lines uh, in the end of the face mask detection that is your code number one these are already added and uh, when start uh, training your face uh, expression detection image once it is done you can confirm me in the chat uh, then we'll go for the then we'll end the session what happened uh, participant does it started model started training or not okay um, so rest all we'll discuss uh, as i said that uh, i'll update you either we'll have a session uh, on sunday or on uh, saturday rest all we will discuss it uh, tomorrow how to use these uh, models for our testing purposes uh, today's uh, session ends here